Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we've got a wonderful message for you today. It's about Jesus. And we've been taking you through the book of Acts. We started by talking about Jesus when he went up to heaven and gave the command to the disciples to go out and preach and he empowered them. But he also told them to wait in the upper room, or not in the upper room, in, in, in Jerusalem where they would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we're going on from there. We spoke about Peter preaching in the streets of Jerusalem and how the people thought they were drunk on wine and how the Holy Spirit come on them with power. Now today I'm going to be talking about the early church and also the main theme is when Peter heals the crippled beggar at the gate beautiful. Very, very powerful uh, message about uh, the church and the healing through the church. The first thing it tells us in Acts, it says about the early church, how they came together daily and they met in the temple courts and in their homes. But also what they did, they had fellowship and they sat under the apostles teaching and also they broke bread and they prayed. So those were the things that they did uh, daily. But I just want to tell you a little bit about because the, the message about Peter healing the crippled beggar talks about the gate beautiful and at the temple in Jerusalem. I just want to give you a little bit of background to that uh, about the, the temple because uh, this was the second temple uh, and it was when, is that the first temple was destroyed and this second temple was still under construction. It hadn't been finished and it, it, they finished the temple in 64 AD and then in 70 AD the Romans demolished it, they destroyed it. But in the meantime I just wanted to tell you about the, the layout there and how, why this beggar was sitting at the gate beautiful. So basically what happened is that the temple area uh, of Herod's uh, temple, what it was is that Solomon's uh, area there, that's where the uh, merchants were trading uh, in the temple area. And this gate beautiful was access to the temple through the women's area. But this area was where they came, the people came uh, to, to lay down their offerings to God. And so this was an opportune place for this beggar to be there asking for money because the people um, would have been more easily persuaded to give. And so the story about Peter and this beggar, Peter and John were approaching or they were at the gate and the beggar asked Peter and John for money and Peter said look at us and so that man gave them his attention and so I'm going to read today from those scriptures to make sure that I get it accurately for you and I'm reading from Acts 3, 6, and this is what it says. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, uh, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man 
who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. So what happened here, Peter speaks to the onlookers and he and says, says here, while the beggar held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if our own power or godliness has made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed and you disowned him before Pilate though he had decided to let him go. You dis disowned the holy and righteous one who asked that the murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in, in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. So that's was what happened with the beggar at the gate beautiful that was healed when Peter and John prayed over them, over him. So I want you to know this, this Jesus that I've just been speaking about is still alive. He's alive. Yeah, amen. And so, and you can receive like this, blind, the, the beggar, I'm sorry, at the gate beautiful, you can receive your healing or salvation in the same way, supernaturally, by God, because I want you to know this, that God appoints men and women on this earth, and children, to be his hands and feet, the hands and feet of Jesus, and so God does work through us, he works through believers, and I can tell you this, if you need something from God, we can help you, we can pray with you, and God will do it, because he makes these wonderful promises. So the gospel of Jesus Christ is this. Uh, I just spelt it out when I said to you uh, that they crucified him, but the important thing about is knowing uh, the purpose of this, the purpose was simply this, God's plan uh, was that all, none should perish, but all come to repentance. That's what God would have. But the important thing is, sin came into the world through Adam. And so what sin is, is sin is death. And so what it means, if you were to die or pass from this world with sin in your life, then you go to hell. That's what the, the Bible tells us. We believe it. And you ought to believe it because it's the truth. But what happened is God had a plan and the plan was to introduce blood sacrifices. He introduced it through Israel. It was animal sacrifice in the first place. But God always had a plan that he would come to earth in a flesh body. And that was Jesus. He came as the Lamb of God. He came to be crucified. And so that anybody that believes this, uh, they can receive forgiveness of sin and uh, live under the grace of God. That's the enabling to be able to walk by faith. So God uh, loves you. He, he makes it plain to you to, for you to know because the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, and whomsoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, what we do here, we ask you to pray. We, it's a very short prayer, but it's powerful. When you actually pray, you preach to yourself. And saving faith comes to you. And you can feel it. It's better felt than felt, like I've heard them say. And so the, the mighty thing about this is that God is faithful to forgive you. If you repent, he will deliver you from all unrighteousness. And it says also in Romans uh, 10, 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the grave, then you'll be saved. 
So that's a, a wonderful message about Jesus today. So God bless you and uh, thank you. And say yes when we come and ask you if you would like to be blessed. Thank you.